Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to present the Angular NG4 core directive. As we have seen on the previous lesson, we have here several course cards displayed and we have here a certain level of repetition in the template. We have these free tags here and we are adding here, for example, the exact same custom event handler. It would be much better to simply loop through a list of courses and apply only one course tag in our template, especially because our data is already available in an array. This would also simplify here our application component. So let's start refactoring this and use the ng4 directive for presenting our list of courses. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to make the courses array available here. We are going to make available to the template not only these free courses, but we are actually going to present the complete list of courses. So imagine what it would be if here we would have somewhere between uh, 7 and 10 courses here in this template. It would be very repetitive. Let's then continue to refactor here our component. We have added here a variable called courses, which contains the complete courses list. And we can now go ahead and remove these free variables that we were using here. So we are no longer going to refer to the courses one by one with separate member variables. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use the Angular ng4 structural directive in order to loop through the list of courses and here is the syntax for ng4 we are going to start here with the star this is a shorthand syntax for structural directives which we will be covering in detail later in this course a structural directive such as the name implies allows us to change the structure of the page based here on a javascript expression so in this case, we want to pass in here an expression that will loop through a list of courses. The looping expression is identical to plain JavaScript. This is the same expression that we would use when looping through a collection in TypeScript. ng4 is going to create a local course loop variable that is going to contain each of the courses being looped. Now we can take this variable here and we can pass it as the input of the course card custom HTML element. Let's then see ng4 in action. After refreshing the application, if we scroll down, we are going to see that not only we have here the first three cards, but notice here there are more cards available. So all the elements of the courses array are being displayed on the screen. So we have here a directive that allows us to generate new components by looping through a data array available at the level of our component. If we click into the courses array available on the DB data file, so this is just some test data that we are using to build our program, we are going to see that indeed all the courses in this file are being displayed here on the screen. Besides the core iteration functionality, ng4 also comes with some additional features. Let's start with the first auxiliary feature, which is going to be the index feature. So let's say that we want to add here a number to the course. We would like to number the courses from one up until the last sequential number of the course. We can do that very easily in the following way. We are going to add here a semicolon after the let of syntax and we are going to access here the index built-in variable that is provided by the ng4 directive. And we are actually going to rename it so that we can use it easily here in our template. We are going to pass in here an alternative name to our index which is simply going to be called the e variable. Now we need to somehow pass the current index of the card to the course card itself and we're going to do that using here a new input parameter that we are about to create we are going to call this index parameter card index and we're going to pass it the value e plus one because e is zero based e starts at zero one two etc so we are adding here plus one if we move here into the card we are going to create here another input we are going to call it card index like we did in the previous template and we are going to declare it as being of type number. Next, we are going to go here to our template and just before here the course description, 
we are going to add here the card index, we are going to append here a space, and we are going to concatenate here the course description. If we reload this, we are going to see that indeed we have here the numerical value 1, 2, 3, etc all the way up until 10. NG4 also provides us a couple of extra features. So not only we have here access to the index of the current element that is being looped, but we also have access to the information if this element is the first element on the list or not. So first is a variable provided by NG4 that will be true only for the case of the first card. And we can rename it using the as syntax to something like, for example, is first. We can now use is first to add a special style here to the first card of the list, for example. In order to add a style to the first course card of the list, we are going to be using the following template syntax. We are going to continue to use the Angular input property syntax in square braces, and we are going to access the class variable of this DOM element. The class property is going to contain the list of CSS classes applied to this HTML element. So we are going to be adding here to the list of CSS classes of this element, the class is-first. This is a CSS class that is going to add here a top border only to the first card of the list. The class is available here under the source assets folder. We have here a styles.css file. And if we open this file, we are going to see that we have here a course card.isFirst CSS class that is applying here a couple of simple styles to our first card of the list. Using this class, we can now use it here at the level of the template. We are going to say that we want to apply the isFirst class in all cases of the list. So we have to provide here a Boolean expression that is going to be true if we want to apply the is first CSS class to the course card, and it should be false if we don't want to add this class to the element. If we try this out now, we are going to see that the class is first is being added to all the elements in the list. Instead of applying the CSS class to all the elements in the list, we would like instead to apply this only to the first element. So for that, we are going to use the is first Boolean variable that we have available here. And now this top border is only visible for the first card in the list. In a very similar way to the first variable, we also have access to a last boolean variable. And this variable works in a very similar way to isFirst. So let's apply here a class called isLast, and this class will only be applied to the last element of our list. So it's very similar to the CSS that we have here, but we are applying a bottom border this time around. So if we try this out, we can see that isFirst is still being applied here. But if we now scroll down here to the bottom of the list, we are going to see that here at the end, we have here the last card course with the bottom border. And if we inspect the card element here using the Chrome Dev tools, we are going to see that indeed this course card here has a CSS class is last. In a very similar way to the first and last variables, we also have an even and odd variable pair. Let's quickly declare here the variables. So first we are going to declare even as is even, and then we are going to declare odd as is odd. Now we have these two variables available and we can apply them here to our template in a very similar way. So we have a CSS class is even that is only going to be applied if the is even variable is set to true and the equivalent is going to be done for the CSS is odd that is only going to be applied to an element if the element is odd. So these two classes is even and is odd are simply going to apply a different color background to each of the cards. Let's have a look at the CSS classes in action. If we refresh the application, we can see that the even elements of our list have a light gray background, while the odd elements have here a light cyan background. 
and this matches the styles that we have here. As we can see, even elements are light grey and odd elements are light cyan, just like we see here on the screen. And with this, we have covered all the auxiliary features of NG4. Let's now cover another Angular Core Directive. We are going to see how can we add or remove conditionally certain elements from the page. We are going to be doing that using the ngif core directive. 